Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Greenside Up. Now we're here in the small tunnel today. I just gutted this yesterday, got rid of all the weeds. I had tomato plants in here, pulled all them out and I've just planted or transplanted three charred plants down there. But I'm gonna get this filled up now, get this planted up for winter. I just thought I'd quickly show this for those people who are new to the channel. This is my temporary bench. I've got behind here some long stays which go along the front here onto these posts and at either end and they support this this temporary benching. But now as I'm planting this tunnel now we'll be out of the way up here until I need them in spring and these benches in spring will get covered in plants but for now I can grow stuff. So I've got to be mindful of when I plant this, I want the short lived stuff down this side because I'm going to need these benches fairly soon next year and the longer lived stuff, things like my chard, which will go on for month after month, will go down this bed. But we'll get this planted up now. Also a good opportunity to see the hanging shelf here. This just keeps pests off your plants. I've got some fennel here um, and they're just out of the way. They wouldn't be bothered by pests, I don't think, but it's just an example and eventually I hope to plant these in here as well. So, um, yeah, just to show you, because it's difficult for anything to get at them, unless they're airborne. But uh, yeah, let's get this planted up now. <laughs> so I'm gonna start this planting off with some Mizuna. Nice Asian green. And these have been grown on in some of these container-wise trays. They're really great, these things. Perhaps haven't been in the trays long enough really yet, but uh, to form a decent root ball. But they'll do. Just really want to keep the ground working for me and keep the plants coming and so you never know exactly what's going to happen next in grow and we could have a nice mild winter we could have an awful winter and this next lot a more mazuna again but these are the red streaks and i'm just really getting these in because the ground is clear um, May as well have something growing in it. This polytunnel now is, I'll have to check, but I think it must be in its seventh year by now. I mean, it's a cheap tunnel, it's a sub 200 pound tunnel that I've strengthened up by building raised beds on all the posts around the edge are driven into the ground a good two foot and the polytunnel is secured to the beds. But let's say it's a sub 200 pound tunnel and it's lasted incredibly well. But it is on its last legs. It's gonna need replaced if I want to keep a tunnel on this location. And funnily enough, I do have another tunnel to put up if I need to. In fact, I've got two tunnels stack it away and <laughs> I can go in now this next lot these are lettuce and this is marvel of four seasons and I'll get as many of these in as I possibly can because they're just going to sit in these trays and waste away if I don't. I just want to keep a steady supply of greenery coming to the table or to the kitchen at home all winter if I can. 
I've got other seeds. I mean, I, I, I did a sowing video yesterday. I've got other seeds and things coming. Now, the reason I'm sowing this sort of late, and I'll continue to sow every month, is we could get a mild winter. If we get a mild winter, all these things will grow brilliantly. If we don't, if it's a really cold winter, they'll just die. I'll compost them. But at least I will have tried. So it doesn't take much effort to sow some seeds and then plant, put your plants out in a nice clear space, which is all I'm doing. Just rolling the dice really. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, planted all those plants, which would see as a good couple of weeks when they come to fruition. And it's taken me, what, five minutes? Can't argue with that. Now I've got some big child plants, three of them here, that I've just transplanted yesterday. Uh, so they're looking a bit sorry for themselves. As we say, a week to sulk, weeks to bulk. But um, hopefully they'll pick up and start growing away again. And they will be for the, the, the veg, the side dishes. But up here, I've got a whole tray here of um, small child plants that I'm going to plant now for salad leaves. So I've got these chard and I'm going to plant them fairly closely because they're not really going to get that big or I don't want them to get that big. These will be picked to go into salads. To be used as younger, much ten more tender leaves. Eventually they will start to outgrow the space. And I'll just then cut a few out and allow them to carry on. And we'll carry on eating them as as a veg, a side dish, you know. Now, we're plagued by rodents here, as well as all the other pests. Mice and, we, yes, we do get rats. And I've seen evidence of them, <coughs> excuse me, in the polytunnel in the polytunnels and I've been wondering because I saw a comment on somebody else's channel it looked like uh, foxes have been having a bit of a party I think it was Sean's channel actually, Sean James Cameron having foxes uh, ripping open compost, compost bags and digging over ground and I think the theory at that time was that it was the fush the fish blood and bone that had attracted them. So I've got a kind of a theory that with me using fish blood and bone as my main fertilizer, um, I wonder if that's been attracting the rats. So all my sort of autumn plantings this year have been done without it, just to see if over this autumn and winter the problem decreases shall we say don't know if it will or not <coughs> but all my ground is really well fertilized anyway uh, it's all been well looked after so these plants shouldn't have any problems finding nutrition anyway so we'll see how we go on with that see if it makes any difference at all now I've got a few bitty trays left over from the planting in the large tunnel the other day these are pak choy, that's a tatsoi, that's a red pak choy and a green pak choy. I'm gonna put these in here, finish these trays off, get them emptied and scrubbed out. So I'll just quickly chuck these in the ground. Green side up, of course. So all in all, it's taken me about half an hour to plant this up. Okay, I had all the plants ready, but I grew them from seed myself. And 
I keep saying this to people, just have a go, sow a couple of seeds, because if you only sow two seeds this year and one fails, you've learned something. You've learned that that particular seed won't grow there, and you've learned that the other one did really well. And this is what it's all about, it's building on your experience. If you grow two seeds this year now, and if they both fail, you've learned something for next year. You might think next year, well, I'll sow them two weeks earlier, or I'll put them on the windowsill, or put a cover over them or something. But you're building on your experience year after year after year. And I'm still doing that now. I'm not perfect. I know a lot of these plants will either die because of the way I planted them super quick, or they'll succumb to some sort of a pest or a, or a mold or a disease or something, or quite often I'll just stand on them. You know, it, it happens. I say none of us are perfect, but have a go. Have a go at a couple of seeds or go and buy a packet of plants from your garden centre and just chuck them in, green side up, of course. <laughs> have a try and, and see where you go because next year you'll be glad that you did. You'll be glad that you started yourself off and had a little go at it. But there we go, that's it. Half an hour, planted up. That's it for today. Look after yourselves, everyone. Please stay safe and I'll see you very, very soon. Tirano.